الشميتي او المعلومات القيمة لا ودلوقتي انا طبعا بقدم استاذتي واختي الجميلة الاستاذة الدكتورة ايلام حسني هتقولي لنا مين مين ابدعي I'm so honored to be here today with all of you uh, to present uh, this, uh, this mini lecture about lupus uh, erythematosus. I would like to first to thank Professor uh, Hisham Awa, uh, my uh, long, long lasting friend since we were very young, I'm not going to say how many years ago, uh, for inviting me and all the beautiful organizing committee of this meeting. Thank you very much for inviting me to this prestigious meeting, and I would like to thank the chairperson of the court for this kind introduction. Uh, concerning unitary lupus, I have nothing to, this, to declare in terms of disclosures. I'm going to uh, go through the definition, the usual clinical manifestations, and I think more important is the unusual clinical manifestations, diagnostic tools, and approach to management, and we'll um, have some keynotes at the end. It is an autoimmune disease that occurs due to the passive transfer of maternal autoantibodies of Jogren syndrome autoantigen, uh, which we call anti rho and anti la. The anti rho SSA means Jogren syndrome antigen, type A, and uh, anti la means the Jogren syndrome um, uh, B antigen antibodies. Um, why, why is it called Jogren syndrome? Also, it's a neonatal lupus and uh, can uh, happen in an infant of a mother with systemic lupus erythematosus. The, when these antibodies were first described, they were described in Jogren syndrome. That's why they are named after Jogren. This doesn't mean that it occurs only in infants of mothers with Jogren syndrome, but it, it can occur in many other autoimmune diseases and the most important is systemic lupus erythematosus. The cutaneous lesions occur in 40% of cases, hepatic dysfunction in 35%, hematological in the form of thrombocytopenia, for instance, in 35%, but the most important and fatal and dangerous is the irreversible cardiac arrhythmias in 25% in the form of congestive heart block and less commonly CNS manifestations. The usual manifestations are the cutaneous. They are typical. Typically, you will have an infant with erythematous rash in the manor area, specifically around the eyes, and uh, sometimes in other places uh, of this face. Look at this case. This is a, a, a four-week-old uh, infant that was um, um, uh, that was described in uh, some years ago. Uh, the rash is typically around the eyes, which we call the raccoon eyes, or the old eyes, it, usually the rash is concentrated here, but it can occur anywhere in the face. It's erythematous, it's macules, and sometimes there are fine scales. The, the second lesion is the annular erythema, which occurs in the body and sometimes in the face as well. So you have two typical manifestations of neonatal lupus in the skin. The raccoon eyes or the periorbital rash and the annular rash. Look at this uh, infant. Usually the rash is in the manor area. This is just a, a newly born. Uh, it can take the most common distribution in the face, but you can find it anywhere else. And we will look at this now. It increases by ultraviolet exposure. So when this infant is exposed to the sunlight, the rash will increase in intensity and will uh, disseminate all over the body. Uh, sometimes some uh, investigators said that it increases by the phototherapy, which we give for neonatal jaundice, and then the rash appears. So you have to keep this in mind. And um, this uh, neonate case was um, uh, published in the New England Journal of Medicine. It's um, um, after two hours of delivery, this infant developed the rash in the mid of the face, erythematous rash, and it was uh, it looked like um, uh, Down syndrome, and this was proved by um, karyotype. It was a Down syndrome case. Okay, this neonate after four weeks, the rash decreased a lot, but it is still in the very orbital area and the mid face uh, region. Uh, region. He didn't have any cardiac affection. This infant only had the rash 
and thrombocytopenia, but with no cardiac affection. So the, by that time, the authors didn't suspect much that it is, it, it was in the US. They didn't suspect much that it should be neurator lupus. So they took a, bun, a punch biopsy from the skin. And then when it proved neurator lupus, they started to investigate the mother and they found that the mother has got anti-rho SSA antibodies. And look at the, the, the lesions around the eye. If we don't have a high index of suspicion, we're not going to diagnose this case because usually the mother is healthy, doesn't give a history of autoimmune disease, maybe it is going, going to show on her later or when we investigate the case, when we suspect the neonatal lupus. Again, lesions around the eye. I myself, I lost the case. I didn't diagnose it because I found that the lesions were very much scaly in the periorbital area and I thought it, this is eczema or seborrheic eczema. And, uh, um, and, but, but what was interesting is that this is not the distribution of seborrhea. And for eczema or ectopic dermatitis, it should be itchy. The child wasn't irritable. He didn't have any itch. So, so I should have suspected neonatal lupus, but I didn't have by that time the high index of suspicion. Later on, I discovered when the mother had manifestations. Okay? Um, again, the periorbital uh, lesions, uh, lesions that can start at any age, and the annular erythema on the face, as you can see. Here are the periorbital lesions. Here is an annular erythema inside the hair, so you may not see it. Sometimes, some kids, uh, they heal by uh, atrophic lesions, which is rare. And the lesions can occur on the body, annular lesions, anywhere on the trunk, and sometimes it takes a look of articaria. It looks just like articaria, and you're going to think that this is a drug eruption from one of the drugs you're using in the neonatal unit, but it's not itchy. This is characteristic, and the lesions are, are macular, not elevated above the surface. We have to record that articaria leads to wheels that are elevated, swollen above the surface, but this is not. Okay, when they took a punch biopsy from a patient, they found a macrophage laden uh, with pigment, they found excess mucine and colloid in the epidermis and dermis. It is not always benign. Not every cutaneous lesion of, uh, uh, of uh, lupus erythematosus is benign. We used to think that it is benign, it will disappear by itself by the age of six months. You don't have even to treat. But if you have a cardiac lesion, a congenital heart block, this is potentially fatal. Um, congenital heart block with a structurally normal heart can occur due to maternal autoantibodies crossing the placenta, causing fibrosis, inflammatory reaction fibrosis at the cardiac conduction system, and damage to the AV node. Sometimes other parts of the conduction system, such as the sinoatrial node, can be affected. At birth, the infant may develop congestive heart failure, hepatomegaly, metabolic acidosis, and the, the, the risk of, for uh, danger signs is heartbeats less than 50, sudden drop in heart rate, endocardial fibroelastosis, which is sometimes a, a concomitant uh, uh, lesion in this case, dilated cardiomyopathy, valvular dysfunction, and of course one of the risk factors is low birth weight, male sex, delivery less than 34 weeks, uh, that's how it looks like in the ECG. As you can see, bradycardia, significant bradycardia. There are two pacemakers here. Because there is a block, the sinoatrial node cannot send any impulses to the ventricle. There is something called the accessory pacemaker in the, in the ventricles that beats at different uh, uh, rates. So the PP waves are regularly spaced at 100 beats per minute. And, uh, and here you have the RR rate, 40 minutes only per uh, minute. So uh, you don't have any relation between the P and the QRS. It is irregular because everyone, the atrium, is working alone and the ventricle is working alone. What about the statistics? Incidence is uh, in, in, in a mother who has a positive rolla antibodies is 2 to 3%. Recurrence after the first index case is up to 20%. So if you have a case of neonatal lupus, you have to expect it in the, in the subsequent <coughs> pregnancies. Mortality, 20%. More than 60% of infants will need a pacemaker. And the late onset cardiomyopathy can take place in 10% of cases. 
other manifestations, including the liver function and the hematologic abnormalities, the autoantibodies, they go down by themselves. You don't have to treat. So at, by the age of 12 months, the anti rho and anti la antibodies will disappear in the blood of the infant, I mean, not the mother, of course. And uh, the, the hematologic and liver abnormalities will be disappeared. Unusual clinical manifestation, like this girl, three years old, who developed telangiectasia in a very uh, 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 retroauricular and in the neck uh, and the temporal region, she had just telangiectasia. These lesions began when she was 11 months old, although the initial lesions of neonatal lupus were in her face, they were not here. And, and this telangiectasia were connected to a diagnosis of systemic lupus erythematosus in the mother. And it responded to laser, uh, laser treatment. And sometimes you can find lesions on the sole of the foot and the palm of the hand, nodular lesions on the sole of the foot, which looks exactly like the punctate erythema in the hands of our girls with systemic lupus erythematosus. It can occur on the sole of the foot of the neonate, and, and, and this is not exposed to ultraviolet rays. This is a place that is not exposed. Okay, neonatal lupus with a typical cardiac and cutaneous uh, lesions occurred in this boy. Just forehead erythematous lesions that were misdiagnosed as fungal lesions, sole of the foot, and in the heart, the baby had hyper by echo, hyper echogenic lesions on the anterior papillar uh, muscle of the left ventricle and the lateral cusp of the tricuspid valve. The ECG was normal, no heart block, cerebral ultrasound was normal. But uh, when at the end they thought they should investigate for neonatal lupus, they found the, uh, the anti nuclear antibody, the anti SSA, Rho, and La were positive in the mother. And when they examined the mother, only one area of vasculitis could be seen in the foot of the mother. So when we, ex when we suspect neonatal lupus, we have to examine the mother by a pathologist because you may find a hidden lesion that will help you in the diagnosis. Uh, the, 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 the lesson we get from this is that many mothers are asymptomatic when neonatal lupus is diagnosed and that uh, signs in the child may be the first indication of the disease in the mother. Um, what about the anatomical and pathological lesions in the heart? Autopsy findings in some uh, studies found fibrosis, calcification of the AV node, sinoatrial node, bundle of his, endocardial fibroelastosis, and this is fatal. Papillary muscle fibrosis, fibrinal disease, you can diagnose this infant by tricuspid incontinence, for instance. Um, calcification of the atrial septum and mononuclear pancarditis. But this, uh, these are unusual manifestations. You can have you need a lupus in twins, in identical twins. Look at those, twi those uh, two infants with neonatal lupus from Pakistan. And then the, the manifestations can be different in some other infants. This is a case report, again from Pakistan, of discordant disease expression of in identical twins. Twin one and two, they were females, okay? Um, the first one had bradycardia, that was diagnosed to be congenital heart block, and the other one had skin rash. The first baby did not have any skin manifestations, okay? And then, third degree, complete heart block in the first one, normal heart in the other. An ANA profile, of course, in the mother, and, and was uh, diagnostic, ANA tips was positive, although it's second, so it doesn't give you a very much clue of um, of uh, 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 systemic lupus, you cannot diagnose systemic lupus from tetra over 40. Uh, the anti rho and anti la were obviously positive above uh, 8, which is when you have an 8 index unit, then you diagnose it. Uh, what I would like to say from the, from the lecture of Professor Galila, uh, the platelets were deficient in both, but more deficient in the one with the skin rash, and that the hemoglobin was normal in both. Okay, um, pulmonary involvement, which is an unusual presentation. You may have a neonate. This neonate developed congenital heart block at birth, and he ha we had to put, uh, they had to put for her a, 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 a pacemaker at the age of three days, and then a permanent pacemaker at the age of 15 days, and then after that, the, the, the condition was deteriorating. Although the heart rate became normal, but the, but the infant did not improve at all. At the age of 17, he had 
and, and, and a respiratory failure and had to be put in an ICU on a ventilator. And by doing uh, and by examining the chest X-ray, there were interstitial lesions. And by the CT scan, there was ground glass appearance. And this was typical, just like the acute lupus pneumonitis uh, of adults with systemic lupus. It, look, it looks the same in our patients, adolescents and adults of systemic lupus. This uh, uh, baby improved on three doses of N-missile prednisolone pulse surgery. They gave them uh, N-missile prednisolone and improved. Okay, neurological manifestations are very rare, including hydrocephalus, myelopathy, uh, thalassemic vascul uh, thalamic vasculopathy, just like what happens in the older children with systemic lupus when we have thalamic vasculopathy. Um, and this is a, a report of a case of severe neonatal lupus without cardiac or cutaneous manifestation. A baby that was born and, and, and to a healthy mother, uh, two days before delivery, there were less fetal movement. The baby died from severe liver and hematologic disease when he was two years, uh, two days old, but with no cardiac or cutaneous symptoms. It was uh, suspected that this is a congenital infection. They did all the battery of investigations to try to look for congenital infections, and nothing appeared. But uh, at the end, it was diagnosed later on. This is a Swedish case. It was diagnosed when the mother had two subsequent pregnancies. The first one passed uneventful, and in the next pregnancy, the baby developed congenital complete heart block, and retrograde, they knew that the first one who died, died out of neonatal lupus. And this is an African-American baby born in the US uh, that had lesions which were very uh, 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 suggestive of neonatal lupus. This mother had actually discovered a lump in her breast in the second trimester that was diagnosed to be uh, a breast carcinoma. She received in the second trimester um, uh, chemotherapy up to the 35th week of gestation, and then she gave birth to this infant with the lesion. They saw that this is fungal infection, and they took a punch biopsy that revealed neonatal lupus. So they started to investigate the mother. They found the antinuclear tetric negative complement uh, was no, and the antinuclear was one was positive. I'm sorry, but the complement there was no hypocomplementemia. The anti DNA was negative but the anti ro and anti la were positive in the mother. They concluded that late pregnancy chemotherapy increased the transplacental transfer of autoantibodies and sensitized the unit to them. How to diagnose? As I said, as I said the most reliable test is the anti ro and anti la antibodies, and the treatment of a baby who was born with the cutaneous lesions of NLE is just ignore it. You can leave it. It will uh, usually, it, it, it results without However, in some cases, you may need topical corticosteroids, anti-malarial agents, laser treatment for residual telangiectasia. Uh, photo protection is important uh, to, to prevent the effect of ultraviolet rays. In this Indian infant case report, they used tacrolimus, 0.03% ointment, once daily. Why? Because the infant had lesions that didn't look like neonatal lupus. It was scarring. There were fibrosis in the skin. So they give tacrolimus, thinking that it might be um, uh, eczema. And, the, and it improved. There was marked improvement. And later on, when they investigated the mother, she, found, she was found to have Joplin syndrome. Concerning the cardiac lesions, corticosteroids sometimes are used. But it has to be um, uh, no recommended that don't use it if there is established third degree heart block. This is irreversible. It will not work. And you will need a pacemaker in this case. IVIG has not been helpful in preventing congenital heart block, I, but IVIG combined with DEXA, administered prenatally to mothers, may help in preventing fet uh, uh, fetal cardiomyopathy or endocardial fibroblastosis, but not conduction defects. Uh, what to do if we know that a mother has a, a, a previous pregnancy with neonatal lupus and now she's pregnant again? Um, and if, they, if she has, a, 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 probably she will have the anti ro antibodies. What are we going to do? Serial fetal echocardiograms. And in this case, we can give dexamethasone to renatal corticosteroids because they are not metabolized by the placenta in a dose of 4 milligrams orally once daily for a period of 6 weeks to the mother. 
Some researchers have also attempted plasma pharesis in the mother and the use of maternal alpha adrenergic agents. Uh, but what, what's interesting is that um, hydroxychloroquine use in the mother with anti-SSA role antibodies and a previous child with cardiac NL may reduce the risk of cardiac neonatal uh, lupus recurrence in subsequent offspring. Hydroxychloroquine is sought to inhibit the toll-like receptor ligation, which is necessary for macrophage action, and may thus will interrupt the cycle because macrophages contribute to the inflammation and fibrosis in cardiac neonatal lupus. My keynotes are, neonatal lupus should be suspected among young infants presenting with congenital heart block or skin rash. Lack of concurrent uh, maternal autoimmune disease doesn't exclude the diagnosis. Um, this, the most important tools of diagnosis are, are the anti-RO and anti-LA. The risk of recurrence in subsequent pregnancies is 20%. Follow-up of those infants and mothers to exclude development of autoimmune disorders is indicated. I would like to acknowledge the team of the Pediatric Allergy and Immunology Unit at HMC University, where I work with, with uh, our mentor and the founder of the unit, Professor Yahya Gamal. Uh, and all my colleagues and even and the team also of the Pediatric Allergy and Immunology Research uh, Lab. And thank you for your time. بس كده احنا هنخلي بالنا هنخلي بجد الصور تحفه الموضوع تحفه احنا بيعدي اكيد علينا بيعدي علينا اكيد يعني بس خلاص بس هنحن ان شاء الله هنركز فيها ان شاء الله لازم تبقى في دماغنا عشان نشخصها. Thank you very much professor